Okay. So today we are going to introduce to you how do we solve system of equations. System of equations is not just a one differential equation, but multiple differential equations. Okay, so it's not that much different from solving one single differential equation. For example, I'm going to motivate that using a very simple example, partial u, partial t, plus I'm going to say u11 of partial u, partial x, plus u12 of partial v, partial x, equal to 0. And partial v, partial t, plus u21 of partial u, partial x, plus u22 of partial v, partial x, equal to 0. Right? So, the only difference from our previous case is that Every equation involves another equation. The time derivative for u involves v, and the time derivative for v involves u. Right? So how do we solve it? We just uh, do exactly the same thing as we did before. dui dt would be equal to u11. For example, if you want to use central difference, ui plus 1 minus ui minus 1 divided by 2 down x plus u12 uh, vi plus 1 minus vi minus 1 2 delta x and this is the same so this is discretization how do we perform error how do we analyze the truncation error of the scheme same thing right so we basically plug in Taylor series on each of these derivatives same thing the only difference is how to analyze stability how do we know this is going to be a stable scheme instead of being an unstable scheme right again we have two ways to analyze stability the simplest way i would say is the what we discussed in the last lecture of Newman stability analysis. Right. But now in this case, we have a little bit more complication because let's, for example, just take this one and use our Fourier series. And but in this case, we need to expand the Fourier series both on U and v again k goes from minus n over 2 to n over 2 minus 1 because of the aliasing of the higher frequencies back to the lower frequencies vi is going to be the same summation over the same range of v k hat same explanation so if we plug this in, what we get is d u hat of k dt, which is a result of substituting uh, the Fourier series into the time derivative and uh, collect the terms with regard to the same exponential of k, plus u11 of v hat of k and the same uh, the same thing as we did before uh, is going to come in jk delta x minus e to the minus jk delta x divided by 2 delta x. Uh, this is actually going to be a common term also for v. So u12. Oh, sorry, this one is u, this one is v. And uh, the same term. Okay, and I'm just going to write down the same equation for V. Now, in this case, do we still have that very simple scalar ODE we can analyze the stability of? We 
we no longer right we need to we need to have a coupled ODE so we can we can only look at the time derivative of these two numbers at the same time this is actually going to be equal to a matrix times u hat of k v hat of k and that matrix involves u11 u12 u21 u22 it also involves the same factor let's just uh, uh, let me just uh, write as uh, not k but ck where ck is equal to e to the jk delta x minus e to the jk minus jk delta x over 2 delta x this is equal to 0 in order to ensure that the scheme is stable what do we need to ensure about this whole matrix the norm is less than one that's that is an excellent way to ensure the stability and uh, another excellent way to ensure the stability is look at the eigenvalues let's talk about it so this is if i write it as d dt of u hat of k v hat of k is uh, is equal to let's move this to the other side a k times the same vector what do we know about the solution to this equation the solution to this equation can be derived analytically by factorizing this matrix in its eigenvalues and eigenvectors if we say a k is equal to uh, what is what's the notation for the eigenvectors vk times lambda uh, lambda k times vk inverse okay so so this is a uh, the vk is going to contain all the eigenvectors of the matrix lambda k is going to contain all the eigenvalues of the matrix in this case it's a two by two matrix unless the two eigenvalues happens to be exactly the same this lambda k is going to be a diagonal matrix it has two diagonal entries corresponding to the two eigenvalues of that matrix okay and these eigenvalues are exactly ck because taking eigenvalue of a matrix is a linear operator if you multiply the matrix by two the eigenvalues are multiplied by two so these eigenvalues are equal to ck times the eigenvalues of this u matrix so in trying to ensure the scheme is stable you only need to compute the eigenvalues of that matrix and the scale these eigenvalues by ck for different case so once you have that eigenvalue expansion what we can do is that we can multiply both sides by vk inverse so vk inverse ddt and by the way vk is not a function i mean the matrix ak is not a function of t therefore the eigenvectors are also not a function of t so once you multiply both sides by vk inverse we get that and in particular let's define the transformed vk's as uh, u tilde k and v tilde k let's define them as vk inverse times u hat k and v hat k right so the reason we're doing this is to diagonalize the differential equation is to decouple these coupled differential equations if we do this what we have is ddt because this vk is not a function of time it can be taken into the time derivative without modifying anything else 
is equal to the first eigenvalue, second eigenvalue, let's just write down this matrix like this, times u tilde k v tilde k. We have 0 and 0 here. That means these two variables, u tilde and v tilde of k, they evolve independently. The eigenvalue, eigenvector factorization of the matrix helps us decouple, helps us performing a linear combination of this v hat and u hat in such a way that the evolution of these recombined values evolve independently. Right, so ddt of u hat of k is just equal to lambda k1 times u, hat of k, uh, u, u tilde of k. ddt of v, v tilde of k is equal to lambda k2 times v tilde of k. As long as these two eigenvalues lie in the stability region of whatever time integration scheme we are using, we know we have a stable scheme. To summarize, if you want to ensure a spatial discretization is stable for a system of equations, okay, we first perform volume stability analysis, which means substituting a discrete Fourier series into the, di into the discretized differential equation. And then for each wave number k, instead of deriving a single number which determines the stability, we are going to derive a 2 by 2 matrix if we have two systems of equations, or a 3 by 3 matrix if we have three equations that is coupled. And we have one matrix for each k. And we need to make sure that every eigenvalue of every matrix associated with every k lies within the stability region of the time integration scheme. OK, any questions? What if we have equal eigenvalues? That's a very good question. In the case we have equal eigenvalues, we need to make still make, want to make sure that equal eigenvalue lies within the stability region of our uh, time integration scheme. Uh, what's a little bit tricky is when that equal eigenvalue lies on the boundary of the stability region. That's a, a lot more complex case. So we know, like in when you have a when when we have a single equation, not a system of equation. If we have an eigenvalue lies exactly on the boundary, then we have a linear growth on the solution error. And if you have a system of equation and you have a, uh, you have a duplicate eigenvalue lies on the boundary, it's a lot more complex case. But if every eigenvalue is within the, the stability region, then it's a, uh, you, you still have the same property. You still have bounded, still have bounded solution error. You need to make sure all the most k have all the lambdas falling into the stability region. Uh, so, how do you ensure that this is the case? Lambda are lambdas are numbers, right? They, they are not functions. So each lambda k one and each lambda k two is a number, and k remember goes from minus n over two to n over two minus one, right? So what I would do in this case is to take this matrix, analyze, take this u11, u12, u21, u22 matrix, look at the eigenvalues of that matrix. And we know the eigenvalues of the matrix AK is equal to the eigenvalues of this matrix times the CK for different Ks. Okay, so basically there are two classes of two classes of numbers you want to look at. One is CK times the first eigenvalue of that matrix, and also the second number is the CKs, different CKs, multiplied by the second eigenvalue of the matrix. If all of them lie seen, so, so you can plot them in the stability region, in the complex plane, if all of them lies within the stability region, you are good.